Hello everyone. Very often, it happens that I start a certain project and then abandon it for many months. And this particular project I abandoned for two whole years. In 2016, I released a video that talked about how to increase the power of an electronic transformer. You can find the link to the video in the description. Right after publishing that video, I decided to shoot another one in which I wanted to show a circuit for half a kilowatt. But, somehow, I abandoned the topic. Sometimes, during experiments with the electronic transformer, it seems like this darn circuit is elastic. No matter how much you load it, it just doesn't care. And today we are going to extract half a kilowatt of pure power from this simple circuit. Don't believe it. You shouldn't. In front of you is a classic electronic transformer circuit for office low-voltage halogen lamps. A half-bridge self-oscillating pulse power supply. We have two transformers, a power transformer and a feedback transformer. I won't explain how all this works. Those who follow my work will confirm. What I really have a lot of on my channel are videos dedicated to electronic transformers. For those interested, you can find some links in the description. The power of the circuit depends on certain components. The input rectifier, power switches, half bridge capacitors, and the power pulse transformer. If you replace them, roughly speaking, with more powerful ones, you can achieve more output power overall. The active components of our circuit are transistors. These are high voltage reverse conducting switches. The circuit is started by a symmetrical DIAC DB3. The most common, budget-friendly, and powerful high-voltage transistors I know of are the MGE-13009. We will use them. But the circuit does not shine with high efficiency. One pair of switches may not be enough for our purposes. Therefore, a second pair is added to the circuit. This is what we ended up with. Powerful low-resistance resistors in the emitter circuits of the transistors are balancing. They help to evenly load all the transistors. The power transformer is toroidal. It was wound a long time ago for some project. The core is a cool one, from EPCO with the N87 grade. The rated power of such a transformer is over 1 kilowatt. Since the converter is of the self-oscillating type, and the operating frequency heavily depends on certain parameters and is extremely unstable, accurately calculating the power transformer is not easy. But an approximate calculation can be done using specialized software, knowing the initial frequency of the converter with a small load. In my case, it's 22 kHz. In the calculation program, we select the half-bridge topology and enter the other data. You will find a link to a video with the process of calculating a pulse transformer and to our mobile app for calculating these same transformers, created based on the works of Yevgeny Moskotov, a guru in the field of pulse converters, in the description. There will also be a link to Moskotov's website in the description. For those who love pulse converters, the website will be to your liking. I will not provide the winding data for my transformer. You understand, you will likely have a different core and the winding parameters will be different. Diode bridge. This is a 10 amp assembly with reverse voltage. 1000 volts. It heats up, but not too much. For long term operation, it should be mounted on a heatsink. Feedback transformer. Ferrite ring. Dimensions are included. I pulled this ring out of a computer power supply. But here, please be more attentive. Such rings are located on the input side of the power supply on the 220 volt line, not on the output. Yellow white, green, blue, and other rings that are on the output of the power supply are made of powdered iron. And they are not suitable for our purposes. We specifically need a ferrite ring. I also used other ferrite rings with permeability from 1500 to 300 and they worked without issues.
The primary windings are identical and contain three turns of wire MM. Feedback, winding, just, one, incomplete turn of wire. MM. Many people have questions related to the phasing of the feedback transformer windings. If the start and end of the windings are mixed up, nothing will work. I have repeatedly explained and shown how everything is connected, but questions still arise. Therefore, if anyone decides to replicate it, just assemble everything according to the board from the archive. Link in the description. And carefully look at these photos. Naturally, both on the schematic and on the board, the beginnings of all windings are marked with dots. Power transistors are mounted on a common heatsink, isolating their bases, for example, with a mica pad or a more modern, thermally conductive insulating material. Well, everything seems ready. You can test it. It's better to conduct such experiments in the yard, as it's impossible to predict when the circuit might blow. And in general, in our field, you can never be sure that the assembled and adjusted construction will work as it should. After all, no one has cancelled the Chinese nuisances in the form of counterfeit transistors or diode bridges. Precautionary Measures The first startup is always done through a safety lamp of 40 to 60 watts. 220 volts. Never, under any circumstances, touch the boards while they are operating. Never short the output of the electronic transformer. It will simply explode, as the circuit has no protections other than the input fuse. But that, unfortunately, only burns out after the power transistors have blown. The voltage at the output of our transformer is alternating. I rectified it to an impure DC for more or less adequate measurements. But naturally, in the rectifier, we will have additional losses. The rectifier itself is an STTH6003. Under the casing are two powerful 30A diodes, connected with a common cathode, such as those used in welding inverters. I attach the rectifier to a heatsink and off we go. Loading the transformer. We'll use old, reliable, and devilishly powerful lamps from a film projector and something else. Since these lamps have very low filament resistance when cold, they will therefore draw much more current from our power supply initially than nominally expected. I attached a powerful thermistor to the input of the circuit. It will limit the current until the lamps heat up. We won't keep the power supply on for long, as the power transistors have no cooling at all. The maximum I was able to achieve with such a load was 460 to 470 watts of pure output power. Considering the losses in the wattmeter, as well as the rectifiers on the wires, I think no one will doubt that the circuit can deliver half a kilowatt. The circuit itself is very simple, not very finicky, and its load capacity, you could say, is top-notch but I do not recommend beginners in radio electronics to replicate it. Even though such schematic solutions are used in industrial power supplies for office low-voltage halogen lamps. Can the power of the circuit be increased even more? In theory, it can be, but not without reason. This circuit is not used in power supplies with more than 250 to 300 watts. For such a simple half-bridge circuit, this is the limit. But the same Moskitov proposed a bridge version of a similar self-oscillating converter with a power of 1000 to 1500 watts in one of the radio magazines. Perhaps, a video demonstrating the operation of this circuit will appear on the channel very soon. Well, friends, this video has come to an end. In the description, you will find the link to the archive with the printed circuit board, 
as well as links to purchase all the components for assembling the same power supply unit and to ready-made electronic transformers of different power ratings. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our electronics group. The link is also in the description. Well, with that, it's time for me to say goodbye. As always, this was Kazuya Yanaka with you. And until we meet again, goodbye.